chemical reaction is a change in which an element or a, or a compound come together to form a new substance, either a new element, well, either a new compound or a different element than what you had when you started. We need to be able to balance these equations so that we obey the law of conservation of mass. What you have on one side of an equation must equal what you have on another. In chemical equations, there are a couple symbols that you need to know. First off, we denote the states of matter using subscripts and parentheses. The subscript S denotes a solid, liquids are by lowercase l, gases by a G, and if something's dissolved in water, which will be most likely a lot of our next unit, we're going to use the subscript AQ. The general format of an equation, of a chemical equation, is that some element or compound reacts with so that's what we symbolize with the plus sign, some other element or compound to form, and we denote the to form or produce words in our sentences with an arrow, some new combination or compound. Sorry, this should be an E. The previous takes we used to see. If the reaction re uh, proceeds in both the forward, meaning we're going from reactants to production of products, and the reverse, meaning products are decomposing to produce reactants, we denote this with a double arrow. And when we get to chemical equilibrium, we're going to go into this in much greater detail. For right now, we're going to be s pretty much focusing on only single or unidirection equations. So as I said, this is mostly focusing on balancing equations. When you balance an equation, it's often easiest to look at the most complicated compound first and start balancing it from one element at a time. Save anything that's elemental. So elemental oxygen, elemental hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, bromine, the Brinkelhoffs, uh, any elemental metals that are laying around. Save those for absolute last. And if you get stuck, it's often easiest to double the most complicated looking thing. The last three bullets on here are situations which will arise in more and more detail as we move on through the year. And it would be best if you begin to memorize them now so that when they come up in class you don't uh, spaz out and say, how did you know? First off, a metal and a halogen is always going to produce a metal halide. I do not believe that's a real word but I'm using it. This would be a good example of, say, sodium and chlorine. Sodium and chlorine come together to form sodium chloride, where these sub-A's and sub-B's correspond to the coefficients that will be needed to use to balance this equation. So sodium chloride Chlorine is part of Brinkelhoff, so it must be Cl2. Since sodium is plus 1 and chlorine is minus 1, when they come together, they have a 1 to 1 ratio. So in order to balance this equation out, I have 1 sodium, I have 1 sodium, I have 2 chlorines. I only have 1 chlorine here, so this needs to be balanced. So in order to do that, we put a 2 in front of both sodium chloride and sodium, and it will balance out and we're now balanced. Everybody's happy. If we wanted, we could put in the states of matter here. Next, some hydrocarbon plus oxygen is going to produce carbon dioxide and water. Uh, I'd like to expand on this in your notes a bit. Pretty much anything plus oxygen is going to cause the oxygen to distribute into that compound. See how this oxygen now pairs up with this carbon? Because it's a hydrocarbon. Carbon gets an oxygen, hydrogen gets its own oxygen to form this. We'll see this with any hydrocarbon plus oxygen. will produce carbon dioxide and water. However, we'll also see uh, uh, sulfur compounds and oxygen producing sulfur dioxide and water. We're going to see this in much greater detail when we work with uh, writing net ionic equations next week or the week after. 
So you might want to start looking at this now and realize that the oxygen, this is not necessarily chemically true, but the good trick is that if you see oxygen by elemental oxygen and it says it's some sort of combustion, that this oxygen is going to distribute itself into um, the compound it's reacting with. Lastly, the last bullet on here is excellent. It actually describes soda. Carbonic acid is not a real compound in of itself. Carbonic acid automatically decomposes down to carbon dioxide and water. When you open a soda can, the fizzing is that carbon dioxide escaping and the water uh, increasing in concentration. You, anytime you have carbonic acid as a product, please never write carbonic acid on your AP test. Please only write uh, carbon dioxide plus water. If this is formed, you're going to form carbon dioxide plus water. This is never going to appear. Oh, when I said last one, I meant second to last one. Metal carbonates, we heat these all the time, and therefore they form metal oxides and carbon, uh, carbon dioxide. So there should be maybe a delta over this arrow to denote that we're heating it. So let's jump right into it. Uh, balancing chemical equations is kind of the Sudoku of chemistry. You just kind of have to roll with it in order to, 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 to try it. So the more you do it, the easier it gets. Let's look at this one. It says ammonium dichromate reacts, is ignited, and forms uh, chromium oxide, nitrogen gas, and water vapor. And it asks us to balance this equation. So once again, I like to highlight exactly what I'm given and what I'm looking to go to. So, so I'm given, they're very nice, they gave us the formula for ammonium dichromate. We're, you know, we know that our products are going to be chromium 3 oxide, nitrogen gas, and water vapor. So let's set that up now. We have ammonium dichromate. And it doesn't say it reacts with anything, it's just ignited, so it becomes chromium uh, 3 oxide, which is Cr2O3, because the Roman numeral 3 tells us that chromium was plus 3. Oxygen is always minus 2. When you crisscross, you end up with Cr2O3. That, that plus nitrogen gas. Remember, nitrogen is diatomic, so it's always going to be N2, never just N. I'm not trying to grab the arrow. Plus water. I recommend you leave lots of room in front so that you can balance these rather easily. So first off, the most scary thing is obviously this huge honking compound out in front. Let's just take it one step at a time. Let's balance the, nit the ammonium first off. I have two nitrogens. I have two nitrogens, so nitrogen's happy. I have eight hydrogens. Uh, I only have two on this side, so I'm going to have to drop a four out in front of that oxygen. Sorry, I mean hydrogen. By doing so now, I've got eight hydrogens. I've got eight hydrogens. I didn't change anything with my nitrogen, so nitrogen's still happy. Chromium, I've got two chromiums. I've got two chromiums. I've got seven oxygens. I have three oxygens plus four. I have seven oxygens. That one actually wasn't as bad as it looked. Let's do another. Ammonium gas reacts with oxygen to form nitric oxide and water vapor. Once again, let's start by highlighting what we're given and what we're going. So they were nice enough to give us the formulas for almost everything that's compound with the exception of water vapor, but I don't think anyone has trouble figuring that one out. And we're asked to balance this equation. So first off, let's just get down everything we've got. We've got ammonium plus oxygen producing nitric oxide and water. So I have 
have my unbalanced equation. Let's let's go through one step at a time. Once again, there's nothing here overtly scary. I mean, we have an elemental oxygen here, so we're going to try to save that guy for last. But let's start with nitrogen, one nitrogen, one nitrogen. Everything's good. Three hydrogens, two hydrogens. Uh, in common, they have six. So let's put a two in front of this and a three in front of that. And in doing so, though, I've altered how many nitrogens I have on this side, so we're going to have to go back. See, we've got six hydrogens, six hydrogens, that's good, but let's take a backspace. We've altered nitrogen, so we've got two nitrogens, we have one nitrogen. Let's change nitrogen, put a two in front of nitrogen here. So we've got two in front of nitrogen. Let's look at oxygen now. So we've got two oxygens, we've got two plus three, we've got five oxygens on this side. All right, a little trick here. If I have five oxygens on this side, and I have elemental oxygen, what, what not whole number could I put in front of oxygen to make this balance out? Well, five divided by two, if I put 2.5 here, my reaction would balance out. I'm gonna put my 2.5 there so you can see. So 2.5 or 5 over 2, whichever you'd rather see it, at. it's both saying the same thing. But how do you have half of an oxygen molecule? It's not possible. So we can't leave this here. We need to get rid of it. If I wanted to get rid of it, I could multiply the entire equation by 2, and that would get rid of this 2 in the denominator, or that would get rid of this 0.5. Again, it depends on how you want to look at it. So I'm going to scratch out all of my coefficients, multiply the entire equation by 2, and I'll have actually a balanced equation, as you see in a second. So that 2 becomes a 4. This 2.5, or 5 divided by 2, becomes a 5. This 2 also becomes a 4. And this 3 becomes a 6. And if we wanted to double check, we could go through it. We have four nitrogens, we have four nitrogens. We have 12 hydrogens, we have 12 hydrogens. We have 10 oxygens, we have four times one is four, plus six, we have 10 oxygens. And we've got a nice balanced equation. Again, balancing equation to satisfy the law of conservation of mass.